Hi there, and welcome to Planet Zoo. Are you hyped for the return of the zoo? I am super happy to be back in the game and I'm back where I'm most productive, sandbox mode. I've chosen the European temperate biome because, well, that's where I'm happiest. The African plains biome that we got to play with in the beta, well, that was fine and all, but it didn't excite me the way working with these beautiful open fields that kind of just look like English countryside does. Today, I'm going to show you how I've made my entrance. This has incorporated an entrance building for the zoo with information desks and I've got a train station up above it. This is based on an entrance I made a while back in Planet Coaster. Now, maybe that's cheating, but what can I say? When you find an idea that works, I find it hard not to go back to it. I'm styling this zoo on the classic theme, particularly Georgian, Edwardian and Victorian architecture which it actually fits quite well with this biome. Hundreds of attractions in Northern Europe, particularly zoos, safari parks and theme parks are actually built within the grounds of stately homes. The massive rural footprints of these places are an ideal environment for zoos. I find it really quite interesting how the grade list of buildings are maintained and the zoos are basically built up around them whilst preserving the heritage of the estate. I love the history behind these places. Land has been owned by nobility since the Middle Ages, claiming vast acres of the countryside for grand houses and gardens. This really took off in the 1600s, with the aristocracy competing to build these elaborate architectural wonders. Think Pride and Prejudice type of thing, big houses and gardens with personal hunting grounds to boot. And of course, Colin Firth emerging soaking wet from a huge lake. No girl can resist a bit of Mr. Darcy. Or maybe that's just me. Anyway. The spiralling costs of building and maintaining these country estates was unsustainable for many houses. Fortunes made in the industrial era was taking over wealth from land, so estates were sold from nobility to prosperous merchants. These guys went about knocking down massive portions of these houses and adding weird and wonderful little structures of their own in sort of gothic or mock gothic architecture, as was the fashion at the time. That's what makes these sort of houses really interesting to me. They're just a huge mix of different styles and eras of depending who owned the house at what time. And I find that really fun to play with in game. This is the history I want my zoo to demonstrate. A lot of country estates saw a big decline in private owners from the First World War. The economy tanked at that time and a lot of wealthy people were, well, no longer wealthy enough to upkeep the house. Estates were demolished, others were saved by the National Trust, and some came into the hands of investors turning them into zoos, safari parks and the theme parks that we know today. I want to embrace the eclectic style of this kind of zoo in my park, so a park that's been built through history, portraying how like real European zoos have developed into what they are today. That means I'm going to have to build up my zoo from like the historical part first, because that would have been there before any of the enclosures or the zoo part was. So I've started that with the entrance here. These two towers in the middle of the building would have been the gatekeeper's lodge. This would have been the start of the long driveway that goes up to the main house. Gatekeeper's lodges were built to house those employed to protect the grounds of the estate. They were originally timber structures, but obviously the desire to impress visitors led to the ever greater architectural display, mimicking the style of the great house itself. At the sides here, I've built additional wings that would have been built when the estate was first opened as a zoological garden, maybe after the First World War, I would think. Now, the train station sitting above the entrance, that's just a personal preference for me. For some reason, every park I build ends up with some kind of transport ride sitting above the entrance. I'm not sure why I'm drawn to this, but it does make for a nice visual impression, I guess. Both sides of the entrance, I've landscaped a little just to keep it in theme. Realistically, this would probably be a car park and the way out to the main road. Although I have visited some country houses where the car park is like half a mile away from where the actual house is and you have to go down this long path first before you even get to the gatehouse. The landscaping here. Now, I did start off using planting only from the correct biome. But to keep this area vibrant, I'll admit I've used plants from various biomes just to liven it up a little bit. I did try and keep it a species that would survive in like Northern European environment. And to be fair, in a lot of these places, they do like try and plant stuff that wouldn't normally grow there. I mean, I think the Victorians in particular really liked planting stuff that they'd found from overseas. Isn't that why we're all suffering with this blooming Japanese knotweed everywhere that we can't get rid of? 
Also, I always see round by mine, there's loads of people that are growing palm trees in their garden and I have no idea how they do it. I can't even get normal plants that are meant to live here to grow in my garden. At least in Planet Zoo, I can put anything down and you don't need to care for it. I am actually really excited to see how this project grows and I hope you'll stick around to see it develop. I've put the entrance as it stands on the Steam Workshop. There's a link to that in the description below. Anyway, cheers for watching. Bye for now.